Hello, I'm Damien Jones from h h Classics, and welcome to a brief overview of the 140 motorcars we've got going under the hammer at the Imperial War Museum, Duxford, on Wednesday, June the 22nd. We've been very fortunate to be offered an incredible cross-section of cars, some with a really lovely history to them. We start with lot one, which is the 1976 Jaguar XJC 4.2. Now, this is a special car. It's a special car because these Jaguars these pillarless coupes are very stylish and they've been something that's been on the rise over the last few years. But this one in particular is because it's been generously donated by Roy Hatfield, a collector we've known for years. And all proceeds from the sale, including our buyer's premium, absolutely 100%, are going to victims in Ukraine. Roy remembers surviving the Blitz in Sheffield during World War II and the plight of all the people of Ukraine has really touched him. So he's made this incredibly generous gesture. It's a lovely car full stop, regardless of the cause. So we would encourage you to bid on that lot to do your part. The cover car for the auction is a 1969 Ferrari 365 GT that's been rebodied in the style of one of the Maranello Mark's 1950s pontoon fender sports racers. Now we know the seller, uh, he's had a lot of Ferraris over the years. I hope he won't mind me saying he is a, he's a fussy so-and-so. So this car will have been built to a very high specification and beautifully detailed. Hopefully that comes across in the photos and the video, but by all means, come down and have a look at it. It really is a gorgeous, gorgeous thing. And a genuine 250 uh, Testarossa. I, some of the early cars, you know, have been trading for well into the 30 millions euros. So this is a fraction of that money, but roaring past you on the road, uh, you know, with those 12 cylinders on song, you'd be pushed to tell the difference. We've got uh, in another sort of very glamorous open car, but different era, a 1975 Jensen Interceptor convertible. Now that's one of the 505 or 514, depending on which source you believe, uh, built. It's a car that has been restored to a high standard again. It's finished in gunmetal gray with red leather, so it's a very striking machine. Left-hand drive, so great for touring on the continent. We've also got a right-hand drive Jensen FF in the same sale, uh, one of the four-wheel drive cars that were so sought after and are such a milestone, and that is one of the more affordable examples to hit the market in recent years, so well worth a look. We've got a couple of fabulous Edwardians, a couple of really lovely brass era cars. We've got a 1906 Brazier 15 horsepower side entrance tonneau. Again, that's come from a large collection of Edwardian cars. It's been very well looked after. It is beautifully equipped and very nicely finished. It's just got a fabulous feel to it. The other notable brass era car we've got is a 1912 Dirac type L12 10 horsepower Tourer. Now that is wonderful, if only because it's been in the current family since 1917. So 105 years. They've looked after it. It's more of an oily rag car than a concourse car, but you just can't buy that kind of history. So again, that's a fabulous thing. Something far racier is the 1962 Austin Healey 3000 Mark II. Now this is the ex Roger Byford car, a car that he just demolished the opposition with. It's a very, very well-sorted war horse of a car, a proper track weapon, proper, it's just a great thing. If you want a well-developed big Healy to go competing with, then that's that. Uh, we've got a 1965 Mercedes-Benz 300 SE Cabriolet. That is one of 78 cars that were supplied new to the UK. Thankfully, this, for the sake of its tinware, it spent most of its life in Australia, which is a much friendlier climate. Uh, it's come back to the UK and it's been entrusted to Mark Specialist Nigel Cooper for a cosmetic restoration. So it looks like a lovely, lovely thing. It's also had a degree of mechanical fettling. So that's a great car. We've also got a 1973 Maserati Bora 4.7. Now, not only is that a real rarity because it's a right-hand drive car, but it was so nice that it was formerly part of Maserati UK's heritage fleet. It's been featured on Top Gear. It's just a lovely, lovely thing in red with black. So just they are much, much underrated cars when you think they were competing against Daytonas, Amuras, you know, the pricing on Boras is way behind. Equally historic or more historic, depending on your mark preference, 
is a 1936 Jaguar or SS Jaguar two and a half liter saloon. Now that model was the very first product to be known as a Jaguar. And this example is the oldest survivor on the UK roads. Well, not on UK roads, it needs restoring, but you get my drift. It's the oldest known survivor in the UK. A one-off, or certainly the only one we've ever seen, nobody's quite sure whether it is a one-off or they built four of them. The 1955 or circa 1955 Hamilton Riley Special. Now that is a car that has had a huge amount of engineering work go into it. Have a look on our website, have a look at the chassis photos we've taken underneath on a ramp. It is a completely bespoke creation. It's bodied in alloy, it's a period built thing, and it's offered for a fraction of what we've been getting for fiberglass Jaguar C-type replicas recently. So an interesting thing. In terms of style and affordability, and another great way into the um, Mercedes mark, we've got a 1958 Mercedes-Benz 190 SL restoration project. It's been in the current family ownership for over 30 years. It looks to our eyes surprisingly solid. It comes with a few replacement panels. Uh, at the other end of the extreme, if you don't want the time, trouble, and effort and expense, there is a 1960 Mercedes-Benz 190 SL that was subject to a Mark Specialist restoration about 9,000 miles ago and is still pure showroom eye candy. Uh, we've got a couple of interesting ACs. We have a 1958 AC Aseca Bristol. That's got the more powerful, more desirable 100D2 engine in it. It's also got front disc brakes. It's had overdrive added. So that's a lovely thing. And for those who prefer open top, we've got a 1962 ACA's 2.6. And now that is a woodsman's ax of a car. Uh, the owner makes no bones about it but it's probably the most affordable ACA's 2.6 on the market today. We've got a pair of lovely Rolls Royces. We've got a 1926 Rolls Royce 20 horsepower fixed head cabriolet, coachwork by Hooper. That is a car, it's had an incredible life, that car. Uh, you know, first owned by a music publishing uh, magnet, then owned by a prince, then spent many, many years in Kenya, then brought back by Colin Crabb, who was arguably the ultimate classic car hunter, certainly for the Exotica, uh, and it's been in the current family ownership since 1971. And during that time, for most of those 51 years, has been used for a family Boxing Day picnic, come rain, come uh, hail, come whatever. So it's just got a lovely, lovely feel to it. The other huge impact Rolls-Royce, the 1928 Rolls-Royce Phantom One Lonsdale Limousine. Now that's a Springfield built car, but everything about it just screams imposing huge drum headlights, beautifully proportioned coachwork, a lovely, lovely thing. We've got the 1960 Jaguar XK 150S 3.8 drop head. Now for many people, the 3.8 S liter cars are absolutely the epitome of a 150, the ultimate development. This is uh, one of 69 ever made. Uh, it's been in the current ownership for all two decades now, uh, wonderfully. A, a long-term client of ours, Tom King, actually bought the car from its second owner in 1984. And once he saw the auction listing for it, thought I, I might still have the original Buff Lockbook for that car and some more paperwork, and he's forwarded that through to us. So the history file on that, which was already large, has got even bigger. Uh, really, really lovely thing, restored a number of years ago, well looked after ever since. And uh, for, as I say, for many, the ultimate XK. For many, one of the ultimate E-types would be an early car. And we have a 1962 3.8 Roadster. So roughly 10 months into production. It's a left-hand drive car, but it retains an awful lot of its correct early features. So it's got the different chrome strip to the tops of the doors. Uh, it's got bigger drive shafts. It's got um, the special vents to the top of the dash and uh, all sorts of things that were phased out through production shortly thereafter. We also have uh, sort of left field, uh, one of the more famous neoclassics and Excalibur. It's a 1965 car, so it's a series one Excalibur. And it's made all the more special that it was supplied new to acting legend, Tony Curtis. Now he didn't have it for very long and it then spent many, many years in a museum. Uh, hence it's believed to be a very low mileage example. But in terms of Hollywood glam and glitz, uh, that's it. So as I say, there are 140 cars. We will be on public view at Duxford on Tuesday the 21st from 12 until 6. So you're welcome to come along and see us then.
Doors will open on sale day, Wednesday the 22nd from nine o'clock onwards, and the auction will start at 1 p.m. It is a live physical sale, so you will be able to bid in the room. You can, of course, also bid via our website, hnh.co.uk, or via the telephone. So we would welcome any pre-sale inquiries. If you've got any more questions, please just contact us on 01925 210035 or info at hnh.co.uk. Otherwise, we very much hope to see you at Duxford. Thank you.